Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and today we're going to cut a mobile antenna. So this is just a quarter wave antenna, and you know any other tunable type antenna, you will end up trimming it down or trimming down the resonator or the whip, and we're going to do so with this right here. In mobile antennas, I prefer the Radio Larson brand because I like the uh, coil. Uh, you can see the coil here it has this gasket that goes on the NMO mount, which seals up very well. And these are relatively inexpensive. They're also extremely durable. I've uh, had several of these things get through car washes and stuff like that, and uh, they usually come out unscathed, whereas some of the other antennas have ended up quite twisted. And Now, you can see here, this is the part number for this particular antenna from Tesco, which is where I get most of my stuff. And you can see here that it says 136 to 512, okay? Don't let this be you. I've seen this before with people that they get this antenna and they think it's some kind of a broadbanded antenna. Basically, that's the range that this antenna will cover right here, which says 136 to 512 megahertz, and by cutting it. So what you'll do is, is sometimes, you know, we don't like to read the instructions, but here's the instructions here, and this gives you a cut chart. Like if we're gonna cut this for UHF, you can see the length that we're gonna to wanna to cut it to here. And I'm gonna cut this one for VHF. So if we look right here on our chart, and we can see that it's 18 and 5 eighths for 145 megahertz. Now I prefer to cut these things a little bit long, and I prefer to cut them for the, excuse me, for the top of the band. So what I'm gonna cut this thing for is it's about 18 and a half inches. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's say that we don't have a cut chart included and or we want to change the band of a antenna that's cut already that we know is a quarter wavelength at uh, some other frequency and we want to convert a VHF to UHF. What we would do is is we would divide 468 divided by the frequency megahertz divide that by 2 and then multiply that by 12 and then that's going to give you a quarter wavelength in inches. Okay. Now there's other formulas and this formula right here is pretty much rough rule. It's not, I mean, depending on the thickness of your conductors and stuff, there's a lot of variables in there, but this is going to put you in the ballpark right here for trimming one of these antennas. So in our example here, 468 divided by 146 megahertz equals 3.205 feet. Divide that by 2 and it equals 1.60 feet. Multiply that times 12 to get the result in inches and we come up with 19.23 inches. Okay. Now in our particular example here, our mount height is about an inch and that's between where the resonator rests and the conductive surface of the antenna. So if we subtract that, we come up with about 18.23 inches. Or to be safe, what you would do is, is you would start the resonator length at 19.23 inches, and then you would trim it a quarter inch at a time until you re reached resonance. Take your tape measure or whatever measuring instrument you have and go at the end of your resonator. And measure out your length. Like I said, in the case of this one here, we want to go 18 and a half inches. So I just take a silver sharpie here and mark that for 18 and a half inches. Now there's a couple different ways you can cut these. Uh, you can cut them with a hacksaw. If you do, you need a vise. You need to hold this thing in there and affix it in the vise very tight. There are uh, cutters, I mean, just like plier type that will actually cut this stainless steel rod, but uh, I don't possess those. So what I usually do is, is I just hold it with a pair of Leatherman tool here, and I use a small cutoff wheel and a Dremel tool. And just score it along here. And take a small piece of emery cloth and just clean the finish off of the very end of the antenna. And this is just going to assist your continuity in your mount. Wipe that off there. It's not a sharp end. Shove that in your base. 
Take your supplied Allen wrench, tighten it up. Go stick it out on your mount and check your reflected power. Okay, checking our reflected power here at 146, 520 megahertz. We're pushing 11 watts forward. And maybe a quarter watt reflected, so that's good. So then we go ahead and we write that down here. And then we change our frequencies and go to both edges of the band and record our results. Okay, we're going to give you the results of our antenna here and testing it with the reflective power meter here. Uh, we start at 146.520, always start midstream. Forward was 11 watts and reflect was 0.25 or a quarter watt. And that gives us an SWR of 136 to 1. Now, if you look, we also go low to 144, 520. We had 11 forward and a half a watt reflected, which gave us an SWR of 154 to 1. And then we also went to the higher range, 147.520, we had 11 watts forward and 0.35 of a watt reflected for an SWR of 143 to 1. So all of those are acceptable and you can see that this definitely favors the higher end than the lower end. So throughout the uh, 2 meter amateur band you're going to be good to go. Uh, if you have just a reflected and forward power and you don't have a cross needle meter or a of what's known as an SWR meter, what you can do is you can use a simple formula here. And basically what you do is, is you find rho, which is going to be the square root of your reflected divided by forward power, which you can see over here. And then you can find your SWR at that point by taking 1 and adding it to rho, and dividing that by 1 minus rho, which you can see right here. And then you come up with your SWR of 1.355 to 1. And if you don't feel like doing the math, which, you know, if you learn how to do it without a tool, then you'll be able to do it with a tool. You can use an uh, online app, or you can actually get one for your uh, smartphone also, to where you center in your forward and reflected power, and it's going to give you a standing wave ratio. Okay, let's go through some troubleshooting here real quick. Let's say that this, these were our results right here. Well, this would indicate that our reflected power was higher at the high end of the band rather than the low end of the band. And this is, indicates the antenna is too long. The antenna, it, because as the wavelength increases, the frequency decreases, which means a correspondingly longer antenna. So this indicates our antenna is too long. So what we would do is, is that we would go ahead and remove our resonator with the Allen screw and then we would remove a quarter inch from the resonator and then we would remeasure it again and let's say that our results were like this which would indicate our antenna was too short and what we would have to do in that circumstance is, is we would ha have to replace the resonator and make our initial cut longer and I would probably go a full inch longer and then trim it up a quarter inch at a time until it was in resonance Another option you have is, is you can actually loosen your set screw here and move your resonator up and down in here. These only have about three-eighths of an inch of travel in them, three-eighths to a half of an inch. So you can move it up a little bit, but once you get past this set screw right here, it's, your resonator is not going to be retained in your mount at all. So re resonator replacement would be the, uh, the best long-term solution in that circumstance, or just rolling with our and rolling with our numbers right here as is and just being cognizant of the fact that it's going to that it's going to be a closer match at the high end of the band rather than the low end of the band. Well now you know that tuning your quarter wavelength antennas is no big deal at all and keep your eyes peeled for more antenna related videos. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.